today I want to look at, at, at a very important question. Sometimes we do things because maybe we feel like we have to, um, or maybe we've always done it, so we just kind of keep on doing it. But I want to ask a very important question today. What is the purpose of worship? What is the purpose of worship? What's 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 the goal? What's the purpose? What's the objective? And with that being asked, how do you know if you have actually succeeded with that goal, with that purpose? How do you know that you've accomplished what you've what your what the purpose is? See, we don't we don't actually stop and ask ourselves what is what is the purpose of the thing? So then because we have no goal, we have no way of knowing if we have reached our goal, if we have completed the task, if we have done whatever it is that we set out to do. So I would argue a few things that worship does, but I I want to also kind of say what are we not saying? Okay, first off, let, let's look at what we're not saying. Should worship songs only be about God. There are some people who think that worship songs are no more than to teach theology, and no less than to teach theology. It's all about teaching theology. That that is the purpose of worship. And every song that they look at, they ask this question, is, is this a song that teaches good theology? And they don't ever get past that. They, they never get to the place of Okay, so every song has to be nothing but to teach us something about God. And I would argue that that is a very unbiblical idea. When you read through the books of Psalms, for instance, these are songs about, you know, from, from Israel to God. These are songs. These are, these are, these are uh, models, if you will. And what do we see in the Psalms? We see things like where it says, I believe it's in Psalm 138. I'm not positive about that, but it says, Oh, I wish somebody would take their children and dash them against the rocks. That's a little intense, and that doesn't really teach us anything about God. That teaches us about processing hurt and bitterness and those things, but it doesn't really teach us anything about God. Or here, take in uh, Psalm 140, deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. That doesn't glorify God. Let's keep going. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their heart and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent's. All he's doing is complaining about somebody who's doing the wrong thing. So now let's look at the claim that worship songs have to only teach theology. They have to only teach us about God. That's not true. Um, I would say that worship songs need to be theologically sound. Yes, but they don't only have to be about theology. There's, an, there's, there's a related idea here. Some people think that everything that you teach from the Old Testament has to somehow show Jesus. Every sermon that you teach from the Old Testament, everything that you learn from the Old, Old Testament has to teach us something about Jesus. Well, now let's look at Paul when he's writing the churches, using the Old Testament as his guide. He is teaching us lessons about God, yes, but also about how we should act, how to resolve church conflict, um, what our goals and purposes in life and ministry should be, the attitude that we should do things with. That doesn't teach us about God per se. It does by extension because... We try and mirror God's purpose in, in our ministry. Yeah, absolutely. But Paul took the Old Testament, and he didn't say, I have to find Jesus in every Old Testament passage. But rather, all scripture is profitable for learning. And I think that, and for, for the other things too, from 2 Timothy, I, I'm, I'm not trying to narrow here. I'm trying to widen. Um, and I would argue that a similar argument has happened with a worship. Worship has to only teach us about theology. Well... Not, not really, though. Um, worship songs should be theological, theologically sound, yes. And they shouldn't establish doctrine that contradicts with the Bible. No, absolutely not. However, worship songs are not only to teach theology. Let's look at a few other things that they could be used for um, to connect with God. Oftentimes, we don't just stop and take the time to acknowledge God for who he is, to present our request to him. To, to focus in on him. And worship, music is a great way to connect with God. Um, another way is obey, because God, God tells us 
God tells us uh, in the Bible to worship him, to glorify him, you know, to, to sing songs to him. So this is something that God has told us to do. So doing it and doing worship is obedience. Um, another thing is worship teaches us to appreciate God and be thankful. Because rather than glorifying our problems or the things that we're going through, we instead learn to stop and reflect who God is and who we are. What God has done and what he is doing versus what's wrong around me or in me. There's something very special that comes in worship. God speaks to us in a way that he wouldn't otherwise. In worship, we get, we get just kind of this idea of who God is in our hearts. And he shows himself to us in, in ways in worship that he doesn't understand what I'm saying through prayer. And reading the Bible is good, but if you're reading the Bible and not praying and not worshiping, you have an unfull picture of God. There are many ways to, to, to seek after God and to desire God to do more in your life. L live as your life. Live with your whole life surrendered to God. Yes. Yes. Read the Bible. Yes. Pray. Yes. Fast. Yes. Sing songs. Yes. Okay. Besides that, worship Worship changes the way we think, what we're thinking about, and our different processes like that. But it does more than just that. Worship also teaches us things about God. It's easier to, to memorize something from the Bible if you put it into a song. It's easier to remind yourself of a truth about God if you put it into a song. See, the Psalms, we don't have perfect theology like we think of it nowadays. The Psalms, we have people with these problems that they just can't they're frustrated with, and they take them to God. And they're wrestling between hoping and trusting in God and just complete despair. And with when the Bible shows us this much bigger image of what worship is, to then narrow it so drastically as to say that it has to be nothing more than a theological lesson, that's not biblically based. That's opinion based. There are some people who are overly focused on theology because of all the heresies and all the false teachers. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean we need to overcompensate by demanding something, get this, demanding something more than the Bible demands, demanding something more than God demands. See, a lot of times we have a higher standard about what qualifies as worship than God himself does. Think about that. So God gives this law, the purpose not to bring salvation, the, the purpose to show us sin. And then people come along, the Pharisees, and they make even more laws. They make the law even harsher than God himself made the law. Think about that. That's exactly what's happening with worship. God says, you know, hey, worship me and, you know, take these problems and, and, and bring them to me and, and just seek me on these things. And so what do we do? We make it more complicated than God told us. We make it more difficult than God told us. We put more restrictions than God told us. That's, that's not the best. Yes, there is a danger in having every single worship song be all about me. Yes, there is that. But there's also a danger in trying to have objective worship with no mention of how God acts in the world. See, the Bible doesn't just tell us objective facts about God. God is faithful. He shows us how God has been faithful in history. How God has been faithful with his prophets, with his people, with, with, with his promises. It shows us. See, God acting in history, responding to our cries after him, that gives us something to worship him about. Now, obviously, God is worthy of worship just by being God. But, excuse me, by God responding to us, interacting with us, showing himself real in our life and in our situations, that gives us something to bring back to him. We cry to him, he answers, and we bring it back to him in, in honor and worship. It's a lot harder to honor and worship God if he doesn't interact in human history. I'm not saying he's less worthy. That's not what I'm saying. It's harder to interact. Okay, look at, for instance, in, um, in the Psalms, when you see David saying, you know, this is, this is my complaint. Or then in another Psalm, he says, I called and he answered. 
I was in despair and God heard me. Exodus chapter 15. God rescued them. They worshipped God. You see see the connect there? People try and, and, and separate it where worship has to be objective, theological fact. But worship in itself is not objective. Worship in itself is subjective. I'm not saying that truth changes. I'm saying that worship becomes more real when you know it for yourself. Job says this. He says, I knew about you, but now I've actually seen you. See, I, I was following this whole religion thing. But but now it, it's gone beyond that. Now this is this is you've shown yourself in a much in a much bigger way. I I, I take back everything I said. I, I I didn't understand what I was talking about. I I I'm I'm totally sorry. After this whole long book of him complaining, oh if I could just present my my uh, present myself to God and and show him how I've been wronged, you know all, all of his friends are, are are you know miserable comforters, and then at the end of the book. We have, we have Job coming to the realization of, I have actually encountered God, and I have nothing more to say. I've finally gotten the thing that I've been asking for this whole book, and I have nothing to say in light of who he is. That's oftentimes where we come to. We sing these songs, and we're okay with that, because we can keep God in a box, in a bubble. And that's just who God is. But what happens if God can't be confined to a box? And in the Bible, we see a God who's not confined to a box. I'm not saying that God is unstable or that he changes. But to say that we understand how God works perfectly because we understand how he has acted in some cases is just not true. You read in, in Genesis where it's talking about the flood. And it says that God is sorry that he created people. What do you do with that? You read in the New Testament about God being loving and, and all these things. And then you come to him telling the Israelites to kill off the Canaanites. So you, you have these these conflicting images of God of this of this just this being that is too powerful for us to reprimand, and he does things that doesn't make sense to us all the time. And then he tells us this: My ways are not your ways. My thought processes are up here. Yours are down here. And what's what's more, he doesn't have to explain himself. So I think by trying to reduce God to a little box, a theological box, and saying that every worship song has to just teach us a theological truth or fact about God, is somewhat narrow for worship. Besides that, let's take that and expound that a little bit. What if we started singing songs about how how God kills the unbelievers, how he sends people to hell? You, you see what I mean? Like, just because something is... A theological truth doesn't mean that it will help us to approach God. Does that kind of make sense? I, I kind of hope you see what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that in a way that's kind of hard to understand, but I digress. Let's keep going. So, so what are some other things that worship accomplishes? It does teach us, yes, but it doesn't just teach us. It also helps us to express ourselves to God, not in a way of my feelings are more important than God's truths, not like that, but in a way that as God speaks and I respond to God and we're having this dialogue, worship is somewhat of an intermediary, a mediator. I'm coming to God with prayers and he's coming back with me to me with, with his word and his promises and I'm bringing worship to him. So what is worship? I think that that in itself is a question that needs to be, needs to be further expanded on. Worship is not songs. Worship is admiration of something attention to something, focus on something, praise of something. That's worship. When you focus your time and your energy and your effort on something, something else, you know, well, it could be yourself. Some people worship themselves. But when, when you focus, when you trust something, when you, when you give your, your, your time and your money to something, you're being your essence into something. That's worship. You have surrendered yourself to this thing. And that's what worship is. So, if worship is not even songs per se, that means more it's about it's about our heart being humble before the creator of all things than it is having a perfect song. And if you look in the Bible, you actually see that example of imperfect people with imperfect songs with God's perfect intervention. And I think that sometimes we just kind of miss that. 
sometimes we definitely we definitely uh, miss that because we think and we teach that worship has to be this object of truth but worship is more than that too worship is also prayer when we're singing the songs it can be a prayer to god deliver me from my enemies god i feel like everybody is against me and we see that in the psalms so if worship is more than just songs that would mean what is the purpose or goal of worship let's let's think about this okay it's more than songs so then the purpose of worship must be that i submit myself to god and acknowledge his moreness his infiniteness his almightiness his ability to be greater than time greater than the problem more worthy than anything we could do more other than everything we've experienced on earth than these passing passions something where god is and we are and maybe the purpose of worship even more so than all these things is to find humility to humble ourselves and abase ourselves as we lift up god in his name glorify what he's done not because god needs it in fact i will say get this we need to worship god more than god needs worship but maybe it's not about what god needs maybe it's about what god deserves see what i mean and sometimes you're going to bring a request to god that is not is not glorifying to him although that is a purpose of worship and it's not right god this person hurt my feelings oh i wish that you just strike them down i wish they'd go to hell see what i mean things like that that, that aren't christian we shouldn't think these things but we do and when we feel these things, rather than actually acting on them, bring them to God and said, that's what we see in the Psalms. And I think that we do need to be careful about what the songs that we sing in church are teaching, like about God's love being reckless, for instance. I think we do need to worry and be concerned about that and, and, and to seriously consider it. But I think that there's much more than just a theological box about who God is. Because I don't think that we have full knowledge of who God is. I think that when we get to heaven, we're going to realize how much of God's much was just so far beyond our comprehension. Like, for instance, the Trinity, just so far beyond our comprehension. And I'm not trying to get mystical here. Really, I'm not. But there are some things that are just unknowable. Your brain cannot comprehend them. And I, I know that the Bible says to worship in spirit and truth, yes, so we're, 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 we're worshiping in truth, the things that God has revealed, absolutely. But worship begins off the stage, and it climaxes out of our mouths. See, worship happens, some, it's something that happens in our heart, a realization, a, a intentional putting God first, a living for him, as Romans 12 1 says, a sacrificing ourselves for him. And then as we do that in our lives, the climax, the epitome of this, is bringing songs to him. See, worshiping, singing a song in a church isn't the starting point. It's not the finishing point either, but it's it needs to start in the heart, and it comes out through the mouth. There's a big difference there. So now that we know what worship is, not songs, but including songs, what is the purpose of worship? Well, we've looked at a lot of good things. Connecting with God, obeying God, appreciating and thanking God, changing what we're thinking about, um, teaching about him and learning about him, absolutely. Expressing ourselves to God, praying to God, glorifying God, focusing on God. These, these are all things, but they're all part of a picture. All part of a picture. But is it a full picture? And here's where we come to a very interesting problem.
you're going to have feelings, and you're going to have feelings that are contradictory to God's word, contradictory to what God wants. But one thing that is always emphasized is what you do with those feelings. Sometimes you're going to be bitter. Sometimes you're going to want vengeance. What are you going to do with those? Are you going to sacrifice your obedience to God to satisfy yourself? Or are you going to sacrifice your feelings, your desires, your passions, what you want to do for God? See, worship... Worship is everything that a Christian does in obedience to God and in honor of God. So it's humility before God, yes, but it's more than that. It's songs, yes, but it's more than that. But in considering all these things, when we ask the question, what is the purpose of worship? We've looked at what worship is. We've looked at some purposes. How do you know when, you, when you've completed it? I think that that is a wrong question because there really is no such thing as completing it. Worship is an ongoing thing. You don't do it and you're done. It's a, it's a continual process. So how do we know when we have accomplished that goal? So long as we are at this moment in time today worshiping God, then that's a win. So long as we are disobeying God, doing what we want, worshiping ourselves and our decisions and our reason, then we're not, we're not meeting that goal. See, what people like to do is they like to have boxes. This is my church box. This is my life box. And they're disconnected. They don't intersect. And I think that is part of the problem, that... We have trained ourselves to be American Christians, good Christians. You know, we have our we have our little boxes that we, that we slip into, so we're fake. We go to a service and we pretend to be something that we're not, and we sing songs that we don't mean, and then we go home and live just like nothing happened. There is no encounter. There's no there's no ongoing dilemma of encountering God and Him not being what you wanted or thought, and then being changed, and then. Encountering God again in a play in a way that is a dilemma. This back and forth communion with God, this this, this contact with always being amazed at who God is and, and what He's going to do. And when we look at all that, the purpose of worship is a black and white separation in life you will either live your life for yourself and your own desires or god and his desires and worship is that splitting point worship is where we come to the point of self-death or killing god and making him into our image not literally killing god you understand but making it where we are our own god and this point of pride that all hinges on worship if God turns around the proud, turns away the pride and acknowledges the, the humble, then it would be true that worship requires all of us to be in submission to God, rather than all of us to be in submission with ourselves. And I think that that is just the tip of the iceberg. So what is worship? Well, some people will say that there's worship and praise, and I used to teach this all the time too, and I think that's mostly misleading. Because it's not about songs, it's about something that happens before you ever sing a song. And I hope that this has caused you to start thinking, not to stop thinking. I'm not trying to give you a definite answer, I'm trying to ask a question that you will hopefully review as you go throughout your years and you get older and older and review it more and more and analyze this more and more and read the Bible and see what it has to say about these things. But I would say this. 
be careful of thinking that you have all answers, and on the flip side of that, be, be careful of thinking that you have no answers. Okay, God did give us answers in the Bible. That doesn't mean we have full knowledge, but that does mean that we know at least truths in part. Maybe through a shadow, maybe like a shadow dimly, absolutely, okay. But still, knowledge. See, some people make it overly mystical where basically we can't know who God is. And whereas I think that we will be surprised at who God is, that doesn't mean that I think that we don't have any clue of who God is. There's a difference there. And I think that we can know God before heaven, but I think that we will never know God fully, if that makes sense. It's not like we know him so intimately that we know what he's going to think and what he's going to do. I mean, the Bible even says this when it says, you know, well, anyways, I'm going too long. You get what I'm saying. Um, who can know the mind of God? Who can, who can give him counsel as to what he should do? And I think that it's good to ask the question, what's the purpose of worship? How do I know if I've done it? But I think that it's something that we need to consider with an ongoing thought process. A lot of times I see this. I see people saying, worship is to teach doctrine. And it's just so, so much limited. Worship is nothing more than theology. That's just, that's just too limited. It's just too limited. It's not the Bible is not that limited. Worship, excuse me, shouldn't be that limited. I, I really think that we might want to relook at that. Now, one closing thing, one more closing thing. I don't want to give out the idea that we don't need to be wise with what theology our our songs are singing. Absolutely, but that's a conversation for another day. My point is simply this. The purpose of worship is more. And theological.